mean, if you think about the, the country in the 1960s, you know, and growing up for me in the 1950s and 60s, where there were lots of social issues, uh, whether it's sort of national with the Vietnam War, race issues, issues of gender. Uh, you know, I was a math major. Uh, the opportunity to be here and work with Paul Dressel, who was an international authority doing evaluation and work, and be able to pursue a PhD seemed like a great opportunity at the time with no intention of staying. Uh, and I was very fortunate with working with a lot of people here because people make the institution that they probably saw something in me that I didn't see in myself, uh, which is, I think, the hallmark of the great people at Michigan State who, who are engaged with students at varieties of levels, that they have the capacity to see more in people than they see in themselves. That was my case, uh, that I was fortunate enough to sort of have some job opportunities along the way. You know, if you looked at our, um, if you looked at our profile, uh, again, based on all the data, we needed to uh, continue to build academic reputation, which means research, quality of people, a, a range of things, just to be able to put a focus on certain areas that would be the exemplars of how good the institution is. So when you look at universities in general, you don't know about all of their programs, you know about some of their programs. And how good those programs are then determines the, the general reputation of the institution. So we needed to work in, in a number of ways on those issues. And that, again, that's reflected in some of the metrics like admissions and, and, the, and the metrics that CAPS looks at. We also needed to, to gain more impetus on our research program. And EFRA at that point had been an idea that was called RIA in a different time and place, but was really the future of nuclear physics and our international leadership. Because if you have a laboratory like NSCL, eventually if you don't go to the next level, it will die off. It has no future with these single purpose laboratories. So EFRA, nuclear physics, became high priority because it was simply the thing that we needed to do. I also, in that transition, was part of the, 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 the need to strengthen the medical schools and medical school research. And you look at peer institutions and our profile of research, we are very competitive in everything except NIH research. And for us to continue to be a top 100 place in the world and grow value for your degree, even after you leave, we have to be able to deal with that issue of NIH research, and that really relies a lot on the decisions regarding the medical school. Well, I'm not a very good example of career planning, <laughs> so I'd be clear about that. Uh, I'm an example, I think, of trying to develop uh, and be a, a lifelong learner and continue to try to learn new and different things all the time and take full advantage of the opportunities of the university to just learn about a lot of things. Maybe not in depth, but a lot of things. And so my ideal job was to be a full professor and to do research and teach statistics to probably the people who didn't want to learn statistics. Um, and uh, it just so happened that in 1978, um, I was on that trajectory and actually in a pretty good place to to, to do that work and work in institutional studies and have a lot of fun doing research. And um, the university uh, received a notification from the Office of, of Compliance Programs that it did not have a numerical affirmative action plan. It had programs and activities, but no affirmative action plan. And no policies and practices and things that, that are uh, procedures and processes that were satisfactory. So they held up the cyclotron contract. So I was called to then President Ed Harden's office, probably at the instigation of Paul Dressel, who was my major professor and sort of guided me as my mentor, and was told that, they, that I was being asked to take on the role of assistant to the president and develop this plan in a very short period of time. And I went back home and said, you know, I'm really on a really great trajectory. I'm having a lot of fun doing what I'm doing. I'm, you know, tenured. You know, the world is a really good 
place here. Why would I want to do this? And uh, then it sort of came to me that I, at that point in time, Paul and to some extent Ed Harden and others in the institution mm -hmm. had provided a lot of opportunity for me. And there was a time to pay it back. 